Hi friends, I'm Phil, the Barista Coffee Dude with BaristaCoffeeLife.com. And what I wanted to share with you today is something that is near and dear to my heart. Now, it has to do with history. A lot of people hate history. A lot of people don't understand history. And I was that way for a long time until I got into coffee. And it sounds super odd that that would be the catalyst that made me actually fall in love with history and be able to learn dates and years and so forth. And I'm sure listening to my videos, you kind of get a sense that there's a historical undertone in anything I do. Uh, that's because I love history and it's because of coffee. Uh, I hated it for a long time until I learned how it actually applies to my vocation. And when I communicate that and improve people's lives with that information and connect some dots for people, it's super awesome. And I hope to do some of that with, with you and for you today. So uh, just kind of bear with me. I'll probably go off some, on some tangents and ramble a little bit, but I love coffee. I love history and I love the history around coffee. So I'm going to share with you about that and I'm going to take however long it takes. So uh, heads up. Uh, now when it comes to coffee, particularly like the history of it, uh, like where it came from, there is a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of uh, things that just aren't so. There's a lot of stories and like folklore that revolve around it. And just to kind of like hit on some of those, we've probably all heard of Caldy the Goat Herder. Uh, the legend goes that Caldy was a goat herder and he had been taking his uh, herd of goats through the desert and he stopped. He noticed that they were eating the red cherries on these shrubs, on these plants, and they got excitable and he got curious. So he ate some of these cherries and then he started to dance and then uh, he thought it was like the greatest thing since sliced cheese. So he took these coffee cherries, whatever they were to him, he didn't know. And he took them to some local Islamic monks. Well, those monks ate it and they were like, oh my gosh, like mind blown because they got like all excited and they were able to stay up during the night prayers. Well, the head monk didn't think that was like all that cool. So he cursed the coffee, took the coffee, threw it in the fire to destroy it. But the aroma in the air captured them and that roasted the coffee. And then they thought like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Let's pour it with some water. And then that's how we got roasted coffee and brewed coffee. Uh, legend, no, that's not sort of how that happened, but it's a really cool story. Uh, Interestingly, I talked with a coffee shop owner or some of their staff at a coffee shop in Kansas City, and it's Ethiopian owned or owned by Ethiopian people. And what they told me is they were like, no, 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 no. Kaldi was not the goat herder. Kaldi was actually the name of the goat because in the Ethiopian language, when you translate the word Kaldi or that inference of whatever that word is, that Kaldi actually means the one who found. So Kaldi, they said, was the name of the goat because the goat is the one who found the coffee. So there you go. Um, another story goes that uh, Muhammad, when he was like on his travels in the early days, he was in a cave and he got really tired. He's being overcome by sleep. The angel Gabriel came down from heaven and served him some coffee. And so, from there, that was like the birth of coffee. Another story goes that you had um, Japanese and Chinese monks who were traveling, they came across it, so on and so forth. So as you can tell, there's a whole bunch of different stories that sort of revolve around where coffee originated. Uh, another common like belief regarding the etymology of the word, like where the word coffee, like C-O-F-F-E-E -E, came from, is the town of uh, cafe or like cafe, I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but it's an Ethiopian town. And so people just think like, oh, a cafe and coffee, that must be like where the word came from. That's not really it either. So here's what we do know about coffee. Coffee came, or coffee was derived from the Rift Valley, which is sort of like Eastern Ethiopia. And the Arab word for coffee is actually kawa. And 
hopefully I'm saying that right. It's Q-A-H-W-A. -A. Google it, look it up. There's some really cool information about that, but the Arab word kawa translates into coffee. So that's actually where the etymology of the word came from. Coffee was um, discovered, as far as we know, around the 14th century, and it wasn't actually ever roasted initially. The cherries were actually chewed, and the, the coffee bean that we know of, that's the seed of the cherry, so those were just discarded. And a lot of times when people were traveling across Ethiopia, they would chew these cherries because they're traveling by foot or camel or whatever it is, and they would chew the coffee cherries for energy, sort of like a, a, a power bar uh, in modern days. So that was sort of like the original intent of coffee and, and its application in the food source, food source. So from Ethiopia, right across uh, the Suez Canal, I guess, is Yemen. And so coffee sort of like grew naturally in the, around the Yergeshef area. And then it got sort of moved over to Yemen just by the, the Arab people, like, like going back and forth. And the first time it was actually roasted was in Turkey. It wasn't actually in Ethiopia. So what happened though is Turkey, Ethiopia, Yemen, all these places, they are Arab nations and in the 14th century they were Arab controlled as well and so coffee became a huge 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 commodity a lot of money revolved around it a lot of power revolved around it a lot of control revolved around coffee so because of that the Arab people just like we would do anyone else would do we or they uh, put a stranglehold on that particular commodity they uh uh, it was highly illegal to smuggle coffee, uh, particularly like live coffee cherries, outside of the Arab world. The penalty for smuggling it out was death. It was that serious of a thing. Uh, when the Arab people would export the coffee, or the, the seeds rather, the beans, they would blanch it in water first. So that way the endosperm and the, the germ would actually not germinate. And so it was like basically a dead seed. So they'd blanch it and then they would kill you if you tried to take it out of the country. So as you can tell, it was like a serious thing that they wanted to maintain control of this particular commodity. Well, eventually what happened, a Dutchman was able to smuggle some coffee out of the Arab world. Now, if you recall anything about the colonial world in like the, the 1500s around that, that time frame, the Dutch controlled Indonesia, which was like Sumatra, Java, uh, Indonesia, all, all those islands in the, like the Pacific over there. So when this Dutchman smuggled it out, naturally he went to Indonesia with it. So that's how coffee went from Ethiopia to Yemen, ultimately to Indonesia. Well, the Dutch empire is headquartered in Europe. So then the Dutch started trading with all these other European nations as well. And uh, they also began to roast coffee. So that's sort of how, the, how coffee moved outside of the Arab world into the European world, what we would know now as uh, Italy, for instance. Uh, well, one of the geopolitical dynamics that was going on at the time, this is right around the... Um, very, very late 1500s, 1600 sort of time frame, there were wars going on between Europe and the Arab world. Well, around 1550, coffee shops started popping up in Europe. So you can tell that there'd be like, oh, like this Arabian commodity with these like European geopolitics and the two things fighting back and forth. Well, that led Pope Clement VIII to declare coffee as the devil's brew. And he tried to forbid the European uh, Christians or the Catholics from consuming the coffee beverage. Well, that lasted until Pope Clement VIII actually had a cup of coffee, at which point he said, we should deprive the devil of this brew and enjoy it. Because if the Catholics and the Christians are enjoying coffee, then we're stealing that joy from the devil, from the Arab people. 
So then at that point, coffee actually became integ an integral part of the European culture. So like it, from London to Italy to like Spain, all that, like all of Europe started to embrace coffee at this point. Well, around that same time frame, you had like the Jamestown colony in the Americas was founded by John Smith in 1607. Uh, John Smith had, he was on charter from London entrepreneurs to open up trade routes. Uh, he was financed, I believe, by London entrepreneurs. So John Smith had previously traveled in the Middle East, however. So he shows up to Jamestown Colony and he already has, he's been indoctrinated with coffee in the Arab world and so forth. So that's how coffee ended up in the Americas was actually through John Smith and the Jamestown Colony in 1607. Well, uh, you didn't only have like the British colonies in the Americas, you also had French colonies uh, like uh, uh, Jamaica and Bermuda, like the Caribbean. Uh, the French colonies were also in South America. Uh, you had Spanish colonies that were all over the world in the 1600s. Uh, the Spanish colonies uh, in large part were in Central America. Uh, you also had like... Uh, I mean, the Dutch, they were in like the Netherlands and stuff like that, too. So as coffee is spreading through Europe, these empires are expanding their colonies in South America, Central America, the Americas. They're opening up all these trade routes, all these entrepreneurial ventures and all these corporations. Uh, the corporation was actually birthed at the same time, too, for charter boats because they would incorporate a particular ship. So if that ship sank then the entrepreneur and the investors behind it were only limited in the loss of that one ship. So actually, that's actually the history of corporations too. Like all this trade, all this world change going on at the same time. In the same era, that's how coffee ended up from Ethiopia and Yemen to Indonesia to like France and then South America, Central America, the Americas, all that. So sort of like in a nutshell, if you sort of piece all these things together and just get like a, a global uh, geopolitical macro view of history at that particular time, it really puts coffee into context in a lot of regards. I'm like, how did this Ethiopian plant where 99% of the genetic makeup of the plant can be traced to Ethiopia, how did that plant end up in Guatemala? How did it end up in Brazil? How did it end up? on the island of java and that's exactly how so super cool stuff uh and uh definitely like research some more of that there's a lot of bits and pieces in between there uh, one thing i plan on doing in a future video is actually hitting on uh coffee varieties and sort of how the varieties evolved during that like trade route and so forth around the same time but anyway i uh you can probably tell I'm super passionate about history. So I hope you learned something too. I hope this is something that inspires you and gets you a little more enthusiastic about coffee. And then uh, for those of you who are serving coffee to other people or roasting it for other people, that this can be information that you can partake or impart <laughs> on uh, your client base and customer base as well. And just help spread the word about how awesome coffee is. So anyway, that's a brief history of coffee. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace.